So tell us what you think. Are we right about ChatGPT, or is AI gonna take over? All right, question of the day is, will ChatGPT replace agents? No. And why do you think ChatGPT won't replace agents? I want to see someone set up a showing and it work out <laughs> smoothly for them and not have a mental breakdown. Oh, man. And then decide that not only do they not want the property, they're going to start it on fire. Real estate is two things. I always tell clients this. It's technical and it's emotional. ChatGPT can handle the technical stuff. They can handle technical stuff. The how to, what do I, how to negotiate this? How long does it take to replace a roof? What's the value based up? That's all technical stuff. The emotional stuff is when you ask for those things and someone says no. no. Yeah. <laughs> like, and then you're like, wait, now what? Hey, this roof is 30 years old. We want to replace. No. Let's see what happens there. Cause chat GPT, what I feel will happen will just go technical. Well, right. don't buy the house. Yeah. It's not taking the play that you need to get in this daycare, that your parents live nearby, that this is school. It does take into play the personal part of real estate, the emotional part of real estate. There's also no relationship with the other side where I can be like, hey man, we need this, throw yep. me a solid. I, we had a client the other day that uh, was working with another agent for six months, since January. And since January, they've lost a ton of offers, a lot of offers, they couldn't get anything passed. But they started to realize that this process isn't going as smooth as they thought. Uh, they reached out to us uh, and said, hey, we want someone that's going to be aggressive in multiple office situations. And we sat down to the whole presentation and said, it's not just the money, it's the relationships. The first place they put an offer on, knew the agent, gave them a call. Hey, this is JP and Ben. We need to get this deal. What do we need? You get us right. this in the next 10 minutes, done. Call a client. Hey, get them this in 10 minutes. You're like, yeah, it's done. We did, we got, got it, got into inspection. My client's in inspection. He said, JP, you know, there's no other offers. So we got it, right? It's like, no, no, no. There were two other offers. We got it because we moved the quickest and we had the best relationship with the other side. Right. So I agree without having that relationship with the other side, it's tough. Man, there are sellers, there are agents, there are attorneys, there are lenders. There's so inspectors. many inspectors. The inspector that we had there did my inspection was doing my client's inspection and my client's dad showed up, did his dad's inspection. Chat wow. GPT could not make that relationship right. happen. And my client felt so much more comfortable. Like, wait, dad, this was your inspector? JP, this is your same inspector? He's like, oh. <laughs> he, he was the taking- The dad's like, my job here is done. My job here is done. <laughs> like he was taking notes. He was like, I don't need to take notes. There's a level of trust that AI can't right. build, right. like it can't build. I think, you know, going really far off course when you look at movies like Terminator and all that stuff, the way, the way that people see AI is that it's taking over and destroying. Right. So the, the, the long-term thing of AI isn't like, this is gonna be great, it's gonna be Zootopia. No, it's gonna turn into Terminator 3 and kill us all. So like, yeah. that's, how I, that's how I think about it. It's kind of weird, but the relationship with the other side, I think is huge. The relationship with your clients. I want to see ChatGPT take a phone call twice a day from your clients. Right. I want to see them talk them off the ledge. It is hard. I had one time, like, it was a couple mm -hmm. and the girlfriend was calling me and then five minutes later, the boyfriend was calling me and she's like, hey, he's about to lose it. Like, can you help? And then he would say the same thing about her and I was like, mediating the two and it ended up working out but yeah i don't think that yep. because you also have to understand their personalities too yep. like i knew he needed like be told certain information to make him feel more comfortable the other one was kind of like go with the flow nonchalant not yep. worried about anything i'm not sure understanding their person as a like their personalities and their nuances like how should i approach this like every seller isn't the same i've had a seller she was god in her 80s uh battling cancer ready to take a vacation was like, I'm done. I just want to get out of here. That motivation is entirely different from someone that says, I just want to see what my house is going to sell for. Right. That's a different conversation. And they're different marketing tactics. They're different that. marketing tactics. Yeah. We're like, she just wanted to be out. Where chat GPT will just be like, do this, this, and this. And that's also why I think so many for sale by owners end up getting an agent. Dang, just nuggets, <laughs> just nuggets. I. <laughs> Mic drop. I agree. Like this is why for sale by owners is, is is challenging. Yeah. Because yes, you can just say these are the top things I need to do, but man, there's a skill that's involved. I can look up how to do a root canal. 
I can right. look that up. <laughs> <laughs> I'm not going to be successful. How to build a home, although <laughs> permits, <laughs> where does the electrical box go? <laughs> I've never been to Menards. I've always, I've always been a Home Depot guy. I started going to Menards. I walked into Menards and I walked through their contractor section. I was like, I could build a house. Mm -hmm. <laughs> like, it makes you feel, my neighbor said, you go to Menards. And now I call and like, Justin. And now you're just building a deck instead. I can build a house. <laughs> <laughs> and I ended up building a deck and my, my, uh, my wife was like, how do you build a deck? I was like, I don't know. I feel like it's definitely not to code. But I, <laughs> but I don't go to JPs. <laughs> but I feel like it can make you feel like you can do it yourself. Like I could, I could sell my own home. Technically you can. I can also do my own root canal. Right. But because I've, your dentist has done 700 root canals, because I've sold 700 homes, maybe a little bit less than that, but because I've done that, there's, there's a skill involved that makes it a little bit easier. It's so like muscle memory, you start. You start picking it up a little bit better, a little yeah. bit, and it becomes a little bit more efficient. I don't know what motivational speaker said this, but he talked about uh, Picasso painting a picture for a lady, and he painted it in 30 seconds and he charged her $30,000 and she said, how can you charge me $30,000 for something you did in 30 seconds? He said it took 30 years for me to be able to do that in 30 seconds. Right. So people are like, oh, JP, this doesn't seem that hard. There's a lot that I've done to get to this point that now I'm so much better than job. Every new client I have, I'm worth more. Right. Every new client I get, I learn something more. I'm like, For I'm sure. a better agent every single new client I've had. Even any deal, whether it falls apart or goes oh, through. Because you could have one client and go through three deals or whatever. Every offer. Yeah, right. <laughs> whether it goes in or not. Yeah. Every, every different attorney you've dealt with, every different lender, every, all those things makes you, makes you such a better agent. So like, I think that experience it's something that ChatGPT doesn't have. It's just reading a library of information saying, oh, I think this is the top one. Spark notes. Spark notes. So we know AI is not gonna take over, but what ways do you think agents can use AI to benefit them? I think asking it new marketing tactics, something fresh, a social media idea. I think property descriptions. Property descriptions. <laughs> Ooh. I think marketing is a huge one for yeah. AI to help push information, maybe something you wouldn't have normally thought of. Yeah, um, I agree. I think for the stuff I've used ChatGPT for is <laughs> these videos that give us ideas is one, but marketing is huge, but also understanding what the uh, most popular real estate topics are, because even though I've done a lot of deals, we've done a lot of deals, what we think is important is based on what we've done. And maybe there's something that's happening that's not in our circle right now. So sometimes asking, hey, what are the top three things happening in the Chicago market or, that buyers right. should be concerned about? Maybe it's happening somewhere else and it's coming here or whatever. Yep. So using that to understand a little bit more of the market, I think is a great way agents can use it. But property descriptions. Ooh. Property description property saves description. me about 30 minutes. <laughs> Ooh, tell me about this house. It has a little property descriptions. It's necessary, but not. Zillow, uh, Redfin, Trulia, all those websites, Realtor.com, their user interface is set up to be pretty. Pictures and colors and clickability and how easy it is to use. The text, you have to scroll down to find that. So like most people, I find most clients that get any of that information don't read any of it. Say, hey JP, I love this place. Hey, heads up, there's no rentals allowed. Oh, I didn't read that. Yeah, it's, it, it's the right. first thing that says no rental is allowed. Right. Hey JP, I like this place. Yeah, it says it in the description, cash only. Right. Like they, they don't read it. So I think the description comes in handy when someone's really interested in a place, then they double back and then they start reading. Right. But most people see the picture and they click and they say, okay, this is a place. There are certain details that are important in the description. What I think is important in the description, I think is, is property specific details. That's just me because I'm an agent. Yeah. Ages of appliances, special assessments coming up, rentability, like questions that I'm going to ask you anyway, right. even if it's not in the description, in a broker private remarks. Like I think those are things that you should always put in there because those are things that every agent should ask and sometimes some clients are pretty smart to figure out like that's their top things and they're gonna read descriptions but trying to figure out how to write a perfect storybook paragraph about the two bed, two bed condo in the West Loop, like, oh dog, I don't not have the time. No. <laughs> Do not have the time, so property descriptions.